Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my pre-calculus tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover factoring polynomials, radical expressions, operations and equations, and rational exponents, and a whole bunch more, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so basically, you are going to be able to find the greatest common factor of polynomials, just as we have previously. So let's say I want to find the greatest common factor of 6x squared and 24x to the third. Well, I'm going to do it in the same exact way, just by finding primes. So we know that 2 times 3 is going to give us 6, and that leaves us with x squared. Okay, then what we're going to do is 2 times 3. 12 is going to give us 24, x to the third, and then this is going to be translated into 2 squared, or 4 times 6, x to the third, which is going to then be translated into 2 to the third times 3. Okay, we have all primes right now. And then we will be able to find from this point that the common factor between these is actually going to be 6x squared. All right, and that's how we find that greatest common factor. And so let's go and do something a little bit more complicated here. Let's say we want to find the greatest common factor between 54xy to the fourth and 72 x to the third and y squared going to do a very very similar thing here this is 54 is 2 times 27 and then we are going to get 2 and then we'll have 3 times 9 to get our 27 and then this is going to be 2 times 3 to the third x y to the fourth now we'll work on the second one two times 36 and then we can go this is going to end up being two squared again i'm just dividing the 36 by two this is where that comes from if you're not quite clear and there's that and then divide the 18 by two once again times nine and this is going to give us 2 to the third, 3 squared times 3y squared. And knowing that, we can then cobble together the similarities between these two results and get 2 times 3 squared and xy squared, which is going to be equal to 18. And this is the greatest common factor of those two guys. All right. We are also going to be able to factor by grouping. And to do that, we have to take a couple steps here. We are very first going to factor out the greatest common factor. Part two, create smaller groups and factor out the greatest common factor. And then part three, just basically continue until it's no longer possible. All right, so let's say we have 4x squared plus 20x plus 3x plus 15. Well, we're going to be able to find a common factor of x plus 5 from these. So this becomes 4xx x plus 5 plus 3 x plus 5, of course. And then we can use our distributive property to factor out the common factor, which is just going to be x plus 5 and 4x plus 3. All right, and that is how we are able to factor polynomials. Now I want to talk about radical expressions. And you might not know what a radical expression is, so let's go and show you. All right, so let's say we have 4 and 16 this right here is a radical expression and of course this is going to be equal to 2 and you might not know what these things are what they're called this is called the index 
And this is called the rad -acand. This is called the radical. There you go. Brings all new ideas to the term radical. All right. So let's say we want to simplify radical expressions. How can we do that? Well, when there is no solution, what we're going to do is find the greatest factor that is a perfect square. So let's start off simple here. Let's say we have 18. Well, this can be converted, of course, into 9 times 2. And then we go and find the square of 9, and we are left with 3 square root of 2. All right, do another one. Let's say we have the cube root of 81. Well, that is going to be converted. Of course, cube root stays there. 27 times 3. And we can go get the cube root of 27. We are left with 3. Cube root of 3. All right, let's get even more complicated. Let's say we have the cube root of x to the 15, y to the 5th, and z to the 6th. We're doing the same type of thing. What we're going to do is figure out how to get cubes. And this is going to work out. Again, 5 times 3 with exponents, same as x to the 15th. So I can change this into x to the 5th and 3. We talked about this previously. This, again, we're going to do the same thing with y. y to the 1 and 3 times y squared. And then finally, we are left with 7 squared like this. Well, now, everything that is cubed inside of here can, of course, be translated into its simpler forms. So what are we going to have? We'll have x to the fifth. Of course, this is coming from right there. y, z squared. And then we're left with everything that could not escape. So that's going to be y squared. All right. And that is how we can simplify radical expressions. Brings us to our next point, which are rational exponents. All right, so with something like x, a over b, b is the index of the radical, and a is going to represent the exponent of the radicand, or the power to which the expression is raised. So if we have 9, 3 over 2, then this is going to translate into, let's get this like this, and 9 like this. And then, of course, we'll be able to translate this exactly like that. All right. And just to give you another example, so you get the point of how to translate back and forth between the two of them. All right. Like this. 64. Of course, this is to the first. And that translates into 4. And that is how we can work and translate rational exponents. And that brings us to radical operations. Now, it's very important to remember, you can only add and subtract when the indices and radicands are equal. So let's say we have 8 square root of 2 plus 6 square root of 8. Well, this is going to be translated into 8 square root of 2 plus and then simplify. So this is going to be 4 times 2. And then, again, square root of 2 plus 6, 4. And of course, we can break these out into two separate individual pieces. And then continue on. Plus 6 times 2 times square root of 2. And I'm on purpose, just taking the, you know, taking this extremely small steps by steps here, just to make sure it's 100% clear. And now what we'll be able to do is take 8 square of 2 plus 12 square of 2, and this is going to give us 20 square of 2. All right, and let's do another example here, just to do another example. Remember. You can only add and subtract when the indices and the radicands are equal. So that's what I am doing with these. All right. Square root of x times 5 square root of x minus 3 
square root of y plus square of y, 2 square root of x plus 4 square of y. And I start off simple and get more and more complicated. All right, well, this translates into 5 square x squared minus 3 square of x and y plus 2 square of x and y plus 4 square of y squared. And then finally, we can say 5 square of x squared minus square of xy plus 4 square of y squared, or square root of y squared. All right, and that is how we can go and simplify radical operations. And that brings us to radical equations. Now you're going to be able to use your exponents to eliminate your radicals. So if let's say you have x plus 4 square root equal to 5. Well, we're going to be able to come in here and square both sides. So you can say x plus 4 squared is equal to 5 squared. And that's going to dramatically simplify this down to x. Whoops, what am I doing here? x plus 4 is equal to 25. And of course, we can simplify that down to find that x is equal to 21. And bang, 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 there's a whole bunch of other things you can think about and put in your memory bank and store in a notebook or somewhere else for your future in calculus. That's all I'm going to cover in this video, however. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.